be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. That is in, court, in accordance with the scripture, I believe, and so I spoke. We also believe, and we also speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus, and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increasing, increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what we see, not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The crowd came together again so that Jesus and his disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He's gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebub, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called to them, and he spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. 
But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He is an unclean spirit. And then his mothers and brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking out to those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mothers and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So only a few short weeks before I was to start my first year of seminary, I received a devastating phone call from the father of one of my very best friends. The call was to inform me that my friend had only a few short hours left for his nearly six-year battle with cancer was nearing its end. In moments of receiving that phone call, I, of course, dropped everything right then and there. I ran out of the office, jumped into my car, and tried to make it to Philadelphia to see him one last time. I was about an hour outside of the city when I received the second devastating phone call that I was too late. Rewind my life to my years when I was but a young middle school student at Taylor Middle School in Warrington, Virginia, One afternoon, I remember hopping on the school bus to head home, but I was hopping on that bus without my younger sister by my side because she had been picked up by my parents earlier in the day. At first, I didn't think much of it. I thought maybe she was sick or she had somewhere to be, a doctor's appointment or something like that, but I soon found out, my family soon found out that she was suffering from her first uh, battles with epilepsy. Needless to say, it was a difficult year for my family and I. Many, many trips to the hospital, new medications for my sister, a new way of life for all of us. Fast forward again to my third year of undergrad, the recession of 2008. In the middle of the day, I received a call from my mother and I thought it was important to pick up because she never called me in the middle of the day. She told me my dad had lost his job. Now, my dad never wavered. He kept strong and did what he had to do. But me, I thought I was going to need to quit school right then and there, take a break from college, head back home, get any job I could to help support the family. And though I never really talked about that much with my family, that thought never left my mind as I went to sleep for nearly a whole year. Fast forward again to my third year of seminary. Most of you know this part of my story. April, my wife and I, we lost our little girl, and that was only a short while after April lost her own good friend and mentor to cancer. The common thread here, my friends, is not what you might think. It's not sadness, not death, not despair, but hope, strength, courage, fortitude, peace, all because of our church families. At every single one of those life-altering events, those seemingly devastating moments of my life, it was my church family who picked me and my family up. It didn't matter where I was. If I was in Warrington, it was, here comes my buddy. (laughs) 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 Levi. (laughs) Hi, buddy. If I was in Warrington, it was St. James. If I was in seminary, it was Epiphany Herndon or St. James Mount Vernon or my classmates. When I was in college, it was my faith community of friends. When I was in Alexandria, it was Christ Church. Now that I'm in Yorktown, Virginia, it's here. You all have been there for me and my family already, and I thank you for that, and I love you for that. And I've talked with many of you who've told me similar stories about how this place we call grace has been there for you in your times of need, right there to pick you up when you fall down, 
to cry with you, to help you, to feed you, to walk through you with the pain. And that's something that we should hold on to because that is special. It's made even more special because of the fact that I think that's what Jesus is reminding us of this morning in that gospel text. Who are my mother and my brothers and my sisters? Jesus exclaims to those who are pressing in on him. He doesn't do that because he's mad or because he's gone out of his mind. He does it because he's trying to remind his family, the people who are around him on that day, that God is forming a new kind of community, a new family, the only kind of family that is always going to be there to pick you up when you fall. And all of those moments that I described to you, I don't know where I would have been without my faith families by my side. Maybe I would have been okay, maybe not. At any given moment during those moments of devastation, my family, even if we wanted to, we didn't have the energy to pick ourselves up. Somebody else needed to do that, and each and every time, the church was right there. God's strength was surrounding us. In the years after my friend had passed, and before I go on, know that I love his parents and his family like that of my own, but they didn't have an active faith life. They weren't connected in, to God in the same way that I am. And that's okay, but because of that, I saw them struggling. I saw them looking to, in places to find answers that they couldn't find anywhere, but perhaps if connected to a community of faith. At one point, they were so desperate to find answers, they actually hired a psychic that they saw on the television to try and connect the dots for them. I remember them telling me about the time they went to see that psychic, about how they didn't receive the closure they thought they might. You see, that psychic connected some dots for them. They talked about all of the people that were connected in my friend's life, family, his friends, neighbors. They connected everybody except me, his best friend. That psychic never mentioned my name, and, and my friend's parents were absolutely dumbfounded by it. It just so happens I was the only one not to be on Facebook. I know, you can laugh. It's okay. <laughs> my point here is that I think if they had been connected to a family of faith, they wouldn't have needed to go looking for answers in that way. And somehow I also think that they would have more easily been able to see that their son, my friend, while he might have lost his battle with cancer, he's won the ultimate battle because now he's resting in those loving hands of God. One of my favorite football coaches of all time, Bobby Bowden, the former Florida State Seminole football coach, and I'm not a Seminole fan, but I do like Bobby. He used to tell his players something every year before the start of the season. He said that in order for them to play football for his team, they needed to have their priorities straight. He said, God, family, school, that's the list. And after you figure all of those things out, somewhere after all that comes the football. When we put God first in our lives, when we look for God's strength at all times, that's also when we discover that the family that we need, the one that will lift us up at all times, going through us anything that we go through, that family is right here in our midst. That's one of the great benefits of the Christian way of life. And the secret is that we're not supposed to keep it a secret. In fact, it should be anything but a secret because what we should do is want for all of God's children to have a place like this. A place of refuge, a place of strength, a place of peace, a place of nourishment, a place of welcome, a place where the community of God will walk with you no matter who you are will welcome you regardless of what you look like, will love you just because you're you. Let's keep being this kind of place, Grace. I know we can do it. Who are my mother and my brothers and my sisters and my father? Who are my friends? Who are my family? You are. We are all family. Now it's time to make our family larger. Amen.
As you are able, I invite you to stand and say with me the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Filled with the Holy Spirit, let us offer prayers to God for the needs, concerns, and hopes of the whole family, human family, saying, hear our prayer. For the church, Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, our bishop, and for the church of the province of Myanmar, that in the power of the Spirit we may join with God's people from all corners of the earth to give witness and praise to God with one voice. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For our partners in outreach and mission, especially for Camp Chanko, whom we support this month with our Thanksgiving basket. God of love and mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer for this parish family and for our visitors and newcomers, that we may drink deeply of the living water of God's spirit and be signs of God's love, joy, and peace. We give thanks for all our visitors. The altar flowers which are given by the rector in gratitude for the good people of Grace Church for remaining faithful in love and service to the church and to God throughout the pandemic. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For those who serve in public office, Joseph, our president, Ralph, our governor, for the Congress and the courts, that the leaders of this land and of every land may serve with hearts turned toward justice, freedom, and peace for all of God's people. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For those whose lives are marked by violence, that they may be comforted and brought to safety, and that God will break the hatred in human hearts and violence and establish a season of peace in areas of conflict. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For all who serve our country, that they may serve with integrity and justice to protect the freedoms we enjoy. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For the sick, the lonely, the destitute, and the hopeless, and for those whose needs are known to God alone, especially Jeanette Kessler, Lou Stack, Gary King, Stella, Ken Pleasant, D. Holland and Melita Holland, Sue Cundiff, the Wyatt family, Sylvia Moreland, that they may be comforted and strengthened by God's living, giving spirit. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may be rest and be in peace with God's presence forever. And especially we remember those who died 77 years ago storming the beaches of Normandy. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may be always supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. 
We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. My sisters, my brothers, my friends in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all so much for being here this morning. A special welcome to any guests that we might have in our midst, uh, either here or online. Thank you for choosing Grace Church this morning. We'd love to have you here. Um, You'll notice that we have a bit of an abbreviated service today. That is because we are graduating our EFM classes for this year, and we will be doing that in just a few moments. So I'm going to do a quick version of announcements, and then we'll do EFM graduation, and then we'll do the Thanksgiving basket. So you can hold those thoughts for just a minute. Um, the biggest announcement that I'd like to share is that after the service, uh, there will be both an EFM sort of information session for those who might be interested in taking the course uh, in the fall and a coffee hour in Riverview. So venture on down to Riverview, um, grab a cup of coffee, uh, check in with the EFM information session and just enjoy it. We had some coffee there after the eight o'clock service. It was absolutely uh, perfect. Um, Let's see here. Our vestry person of the day for the 1015 service is Ellen. Ellen Thacker, she's in the back. Uh, If you can't catch me after the service and you have something you want to let us know, please let Ellen know and she'll let me know. So thank you for that. Um, And then everything else in Friday, Graham, I hope you'll take a quick peek at throughout the course of this week so you don't miss anything. There's always something going on here at the church, uh, and I, I love you all for that. At this time, uh, I'd like to invite uh, Melinda Reed and Andrew Brock up to, uh, to do the graduation for EFM, so come on up. And Janet, sorry Janet. Stand off to the Who's side. graduating this year? <laughs> this morning we're here to recognize and honor four years of hard work by these folks who are graduating from Education for Ministry, or as we call it colloquially, EFM. A priest once described EFM as the yeast of the congregation. So if you are an EFM graduate, you are a part of that yeast, would you just stand where you are? We have a lot of yeast at Grace Church. (laughs) Thank you, and congratulations on your graduation. However long ago that may be, I was asking Jean Kirkham this morning, How long have we been doing EFM at Grace Church? And she was responsible, and she and Elsa Bauckham together brought EFM to Grace Church. 
and she thinks, to the best of her recollection, that that was in 1994, five, four or five. So <clears throat> we have a long history and tradition with education for ministry. Education for ministry is intended for lay people. It's not intended for folks who are going into the priesthood. Uh, they're welcome, and a lot of the priests have been through the program, but it's intended for people like you and I who want to know more about our faith and more about spirituality in our lives. And so after the service, as Selden said, we will be upstairs in Riverview, and we'll have some brochures to hand out to you and to give you some information about what EFM encompasses. And we are recruiting for the fall class classes, which will begin in September. So I would like to present this diploma to Janet Stevens and I, our mentors for the Wednesday group. Janet doesn't get a diploma. She already has one. <laughs> I just got twisted around there. But I want to present this to Aileen Hammers, who has finished four years of EFM for the second time. The curriculum in EFM, like any well-structured course, changes. And so a lot of folks who have done EFM in the past, when the new curriculum comes out, says, well, I want to do that again. And Eileen was one of those folk. And she has been a faithful student, and she has been a terrific participant in class. We'll miss her next year in our class. And she did all of that all by herself. Well, she was the only student this year in our group in year four. So, Eileen, here's your diploma. I checked it. <laughs> and to make it really official, here's her EFM alumni pin from Suwanee, the University of the South. Congratulations. We'll miss you. Let me get over here. Um, I would just like to uh, piggyback on one thing. Yeah, Andrew, please use the microphone so sure. our online sure. friends can hear yep. you. Sorry. Yep. I would like to uh, piggyback on one thing in particular uh, that Melinda said. Everything, of course, was wonderful. But um, we're, we also would love to invite former EFM graduates or people who didn't quite finish to join us in one of the two uh, groups this fall to, for a refresher. The curriculum, if you haven't done EFM in the last four years, it has changed a lot, and it's wonderful. And we'd like to invite you to, to join us for um, a refresher year. You get to pick one, two, three, or four. You know, you get to pick your own year. Um, Hebrew scriptures, Christian scriptures, church history, theology. And we'd love for some of you to do that with an eye to being trained to be an be a mentor in subsequent years. So keep that in mind and see if you might be feeling called in that direction. Um, the, the group that I have co-mentored with Debbie Kobazak, who I'm sorry could not be here this morning, she was not feeling well, um, started fresh uh, four years ago and um, from scratch. And, and, um, and of the founding members of that group, one is finishing today, Carol Benning. <laughs> And Carol, um, Carol brought to EFM so many things. She brought her um, well-studied uh, skepticism and openness, and openness, balanced by her openness to new ideas. And I think that's, I think that's why she was able to do it, EFM in the first place. I think she was really skeptical of the whole thing, but she was open to giving it a shot and became um, a valued member of our group. She has a, a a way of reminding us constantly that, that the God we worship is huge, is bigger than we know, and that no religious tradition or faith tradition has locks on God, that God embraces and loves us all. So that was one of Carol's many um, contributions to our group. So Carol, let me see, which one is yours? This is yours. Congratulations. And Lois Winter had completed um, at least one year of EFM in, um, in earlier years in a different group, and so she came in as a, a year two member of our group, 
And um, one of the things that Lois brought to our group was her love of fractals and her um, a frequent use of them as a metaphor for the interconnectedness of all creatures and all of life. And Lois also drew um, all, all the time from her many experiences, from her um, studies of philosophy and history. Um, she, she brought in a multicultural um, awareness frequently that contributed to the richness and depth of our um, conversations. And both she and Carol have a huge hearts for justice and both were, um, were, were wonderful in reminding us about that too. And calling out injustice, whether it was in the scriptures or in church history or in our current situations. So, Lois. Congratulations. Um, we had two other wonderful souls who began with us four years ago, and I'm, I feel quite sure that they would be here receiving their certificates this morning. Had they not been called prematurely by our estimation into the deeper heart of God? Ray Finn, um, a retired um, uh, teacher and playwright and neighbor and friend of Grace, um, died suddenly and unexpectedly of a heart attack in June two years ago, right after he and his wife Martha had hosted, just, just a couple of weeks after he and his wife Martha had hosted our spring luncheon. Um, we missed his wisdom and his, um, his presence, his wonderful, well-told stories these last two years, and we also missed his socks. He had wonderful socks, but Martha <laughs> saved them and gave us each a pair, so we could, we, if it had been colder, I would have worn some of Ray's socks this morning. Um, the other person who started with us is, um, was Laurie Tyler. Um, Laurie was re retired as a sergeant from the Air Force and, and from a long and wonderful um, career in banking and finance. And Laurie had a wonderful, contagious laugh. She had a beautiful, deep singing voice, a lovely speaking voice. And, um, and she, was, she would call us out when we, we, we got a little glib about making generalizations and um, especially when they did not fit her. She was not afraid to speak up and, and, and do so in love. Um, we've, we've missed both Laurie and, and Ray. These, uh, well, Laurie, Laurie died. She, she was too ill to participate this last year, and she died in January of CIDP, which is a rare autoimmune disease. Um, we've missed them both very much, and we just want to name them and, and say, may they rest in peace. Thank you. Um, would everybody please stand and pray with us? Let us pray. Most holy and life-giving God, the friends of Jesus carried your good news each to a different place according to their gifts and their calling. Bless these, your EFM graduates, as they carry out your word of love in a new and exciting way and help them to venture into the world and make disciples for your service and the building up of your church. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, may you be blessed now and forevermore. Amen. Congratulations. And last but not least, our Thanksgiving basket uh, this month is going to go to Camp Chanko, one of our diocesan camps. Uh, like most camps uh, last year, a lot of them suffered pretty bad from, from the pandemic. So um, your generosity is always uh, thanked and welcomed. If you wouldn't mind just coming up to the microphone uh, as quickly as you can and, and letting us know what you're thankful for. Uh, and the reason we're doing the microphone is so the, our friends online can hear us. They can't hear anything unless it's coming through one of our mics. So, hi, sweetie. How are you? What are you thankful for? I'm thankful for my family. Oh, thank you. I'm thankful for finally being able to be back at church today. Very nice. And I am thankful for the sight and sounds of little people in the worship service today. <laughs> <laughs> Just 
I too am thankful for the sights and sounds of little people. And I want to give thanks to a lady who's close to me. Next Friday, she'll celebrate her 518th birthday. <laughs> Dog years. <laughs> I'm thankful that we could gather in person for the EFM graduates. I'm thankful that at last my family can all come down and celebrate my birthday today. Yeah. I am thankful for Camp Chanko. Um, I've seen how much it can change kids' lives, and change my son's life, and um, he was a counselor, and it's just the greatest thing in the world. So if you have kids, send them. <laughs> I'm thankful for my loving wife, who has a birthday tomorrow, that uh, I'm off with, hope with many, many more. Because fools rush in, I decided three weeks ago to host our neighborhood barbecue on my yard. <laughs> it was yesterday, and it turned out really well, although it was a lot of work, and I'm very grateful that I got to see all my new neighbors and See people I haven't seen in two years, and it was wonderful. And I'm also thankful for Kenko, who's taking my son the whole summer, and he's going to be running the ropes course there. Well, I am thankful for EFM. It goes without saying. Thankful for grace and the blessings to be here with you all today. I'm thankful for Chanko as well. Uh, I've had an opportunity in the past to serve on the board out at Chanko, and this is a wonderful organization of just absolutely loving people. So uh, I'm very thankful for, for my opportunity to work with them. I'm thankful for a lovely evening last night to celebrate Marilyn's birthday. And I also am thankful for the joyful noise of Levi and Hayes this morning. <laughs> I'm also thankful for Chanko. Uh, one of the magical things about Chanko that's always seemed crazy to me is you can, you'll go to camp for the summer and then see those same people one year later and there's never any like, oh, how was your you know, year? It's always you just pick off where you left off every time. I'm thankful for the curriculum provided by the Episcopal Church, both in EFM and in Sacred Ground, that are a wealth of information to really stretch you and stretch your mind, but also allow your input so that you can say and think exactly what you feel. It's a wonderful, both of those are wonderful programs an ad, I guess. Um, I am immensely grateful that the Lord put this crazy man in my life and that we've been <laughs> together for 53 years on Tuesday. So thank you. Au revoir. I also am thankful for um, both Camp Chenko and EFM. I'm thankful for getting to know everybody in EFM that I was with because I had to switch groups, but um, it was a it was a good switch, and thankful that uh, I made it to Massachusetts and back in time. <laughs> and as always, I'm thankful for your love and your ministry of this place we call Grace Church. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
continue with Eucharistic prayer A. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling His death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God, the holy things for the holy ones. May be seated until it is your time to come up to the table.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, You have graciously accepted us as living members of Your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of His body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve You with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, remember that life is short and we have too little time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be quick to be kind, make haste to love, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit.